Did you miss one of these Notion updates? It's been a while since the last big feature release, but the team has still been busy at work making tons of small improvements. But it can be quite hard to keep track of all of that. So in this video, we're going over all the recent feature releases and what they mean for your workflow. Notion's home section just got a calendar upgrade. That means I can now see my upcoming events right here in Notion. And I can even join upcoming Zoom or Google meetings with just one click. The way this works is that if you have Notion calendar already installed on your computer, then this will automatically appear. If you don't, then you can either install Notion calendar or you will have an option uh, here to say connect to Google calendar. So you see for me, it says like I just mirror my calendar app. Again, if you don't use Notion calendar at all, you can uh, connect another Google calendar, but that's also the only calendar system it currently works with. So if you use only Apple calendar or only Microsoft ones, you're out of luck. Apart from that, you can customize it, right? You can uh, include events for uh, today, for like upcoming days. You can include all the events, even without participants and so on and so on. So it's a really nice way to quickly see what's up uh, with your next days. And Home now allows you to pin a specific database view. If I go down to the bottom, we see this area where I can select now database. And let's actually uh, pick my uh, content calendar because that seems uh, quite relevant for me. Content creation. And I would like to see my uh, YouTube uh, production view. And you see, I now have this pinned version of my YouTube view. I can, of course, adapt it, right? I can change the filters and the sorts right here. And I could also um, add additional views to flick through. But again, then I would need to change it, right? So it's one widget, now option to pin like multiple of these database widgets for now, but uh, still pretty nice to have it right here. And of course, if any of these widgets, uh, you know, are not to your liking, you say, okay, I don't ever need to see my calendar here. Remember, you can always go on the three dots on the top right corner and say, show high widgets and make sure that you only show the elements uh, that you want. And top tip, you can also make sure that your default start page is either home. So it means if nothing is open in Notion, you know, you start a fresh instance, home opens your last visit page, or the top page in your sidebar, which is typically the very top of your favorite icon. So that way you can customize what Notion should launch with. Speaking of pins, if you use the desktop app of Notion, you can now pin specific tabs. And you can finally reorder your existing tabs simply by dragging them around. So if you have a ton of them open, like I do at the moment, it's now super easy to say, well, actually, you know, I would really like my, oops, my home tab to be here at the very front. And then my Notion master plan that should be the second thing right next to it. You can crop and mask images now directly in Notion. I really need to get some new headshots done. But in the meantime, let's use this as an example. You see now that you have here besides the comment and the caption option, also the crop image option. And that means we can now uh, simply change a little bit the aspect ratio and we can also most importantly make easy circles. So no longer, you know, trying to find the round picture to add to your Notion pages. Now you can do it directly here, save it and have a crop image right in Notion. Database automation steps can finally be duplicated. This is a huge time saver in particular if you were using database automations to create standard tasks for your projects. Because before that you had to, you know, set them up all individually. There was a lot of clicks. Now you can just go in here, click on your automation, and then on the steps, on the three dots, you can choose to duplicate it above or below. And they can now be used to notify people. Let's say, for example, I have my knowledge base in Notion, and whenever a document is ready to be reviewed, I want to notify the person well, who has to notify that document. To do so, I can now go in here uh, and uh, add a new automation and say, oh, okay, like, please uh, notify. And as a trigger, we can say whenever the status is changed to, um, you know, the uh, review step, uh, and then I want to notify a person. So in order to do that, we can say send notification to, and we can then select the recipient, either like a specific uh, uh, people, right? So like always the same person or even better, the responsible person. So maybe we want to uh, notify the person who's responsible for the doc. So we can say, okay, please, uh, you know, the one who was responsible for it, please notify them and tell them uh, the document uh, is ready for your review, exclamation. Before we continue, quick shout out to the sponsor of this video, Jan. Jam is your new best friend if you ever work together with developers. Basically, it's a Chrome extension that allows you to capture any bugs that occur with just one click and then send a report together with all these annoying technical details directly to your developer. And they just launched their Notion integration, which means you can send all these bug reports directly to your Notion task database. All you have to do, let's say, okay, I visit my page, I check out some other things and I see, okay, this animation is all wrong. I need to talk to my developer about it. All I need to do is click the develop, uh, the icon in the extension, say, okay, please give me an instant replay that captures the last 30 seconds of what I'm doing. Now I can say, please create a Notion page. I'm saying, you know, like the icon uh, animation is 
wrong, um, you know, make it uh, prettier, exclamation mark. And then I can, uh, here, my Notion uh, page is already connected to the database. I can create a page and now it sends it directly to Notion. In Notion, I then have a new entry and this entry has all the information my developer needs. And they have the instant replay, they have the website where it occurred, they know the device and browser, date and time, and they can even check all the console logs and everything else that they might need in order to fix this issue quick. So if you want to make your developer's life a whole lot easier, then check out Jam, the link is in the description, and it's free to get started. And now, back to the update report. The new page look has gotten a lot more minimal. So you see, it's a lot cleaner and more minimal. You just have the option to now write the title and then go directly into the page 40. Uh, the options to, you know, add specific elements have now moved to the bottom. You can ask AI, that's very front and center. So if you just wanted to tell it, you know, please draft me, um, you know, a uh, checklist for something, you can do that. And then you have access to three um, quick uh, templates. So if you click on one of these, it actually pulls in one of Notion's default uh, templates. And if you want to create a database, you need to click on table. So that's a little bit more hidden than before, right? Before you had this section between pages at the top, database at the bottom. Now you need to know, well, actually, I need to have a table and then you go back to your usual um, database creation option. And you can now create Notion pages directly from PDFs. To do so, we simply open a new page and then under the more options here, we can click import and that brings up this new PDF option. That allows us to select any uh, PDF from our desktop. So let's take this one as an example and then it will build you a Notion page from that. Now, it isn't perfect yet, in particular, if you have like specific layout elements on the PDF, it uh, gets them wrong uh, occasionally, but it at least gets all the text in there very quickly. And then for the icon side, we had like column structure there. So we can just like quickly drag that to the side to create that same look. So all in all, I think like a really cool feature, made much quicker to get your information in Notion, particularly right if you were so far tracking them in more old school tools like G Drive uh, or Shepard. Notifications in Notion have gotten an overall rework with a brand new inbox. The first change is that you can now have this new inbox permanently pinned as a side tab. So here, right if I now go up there, I can say, please lock this side inbox pane open. And I have just uh, a pane now constantly next to me. And I can also then go in and have a few more options of how to sort my notifications. So one, I can say, please show me also uh, only certain uh, updates. And I can uh, then more easily with one click mark something as read or unread and archive it. Notion definitely seems to love side panes at the moment, so your private pages get one too. This can be found if you go in your sidebar and then down to private, you see now this more tab. And here you have a, a bunch of more additional private pages <laughs> if you didn't tidy them up. And you can uh, lock this, so again, another side pane here as an option. Plus then sorting options and you can just create a new page right from this side pane as well. Formulas have gotten some useful new operators. The two new operators are mean and median. And they're particularly useful if you have one of these analytics setups. For example, let's say you have your tickets here and you track how long it takes from a ticket being opened until it's been successfully completed. And now you want to run some, you know, calculations on that. Uh, that's gotten a lot easier. So now what all you need to do is go in here and say, okay, please give me uh, tickets. And from them, please give me all the values for the um, time to completion. Yeah, that just like, as you can see, returns the completion time. And now I can just and uh, put on there like the mean to calculate the mean as okay, 13 is the mean, or even harder to calculate otherwise the, the median, right? That's like really a, a big improvement. Uh, 15, again, super, super useful for these types of scenarios. Filter and sort have kind of disappeared from your databases. Instead, what happens now if you hover over your database is that you only see these icons. So you have a filter icon and a sort icon, which makes the whole thing a little less cluttered, but of course uh, makes it a bit more complicated for new users. Luckily, if you go on the three dots, you still have filter and sort as spelled out options. But yeah, don't be confused if you have a different UI appearing here on top of your databases now. And it's finally possible to search through the templates that you create for a database. This is particularly useful if you have a lot of templates. So here it's still fine, right? I can quickly go to uh, the ones that I'm looking for. But if you have one with like dozens of templates, this will make it much easier. Creating super narrow properties for your databases has never been easier. Now there was a previous trick of how you could get really, really narrow uh, properties and involve taking a property, turning it into uh, a checkbox type. So saying, yeah, okay, please just make this checkbox, then making it super narrow and then switching it back to whatever property type you actually wanted to have because it would keep that with it. But of course, that's not the most uh, smooth one. So now there's an actually much easier background. So in order to get it smaller than this, just hold down the option or the alt key, depending on whether you're on Windows or Mac. And that way you can get things super narrow in no time. And we also got a small update for Notion Calendar. 
Now it's unfortunately not yet support for Apple or Outlook calendars, but a neat little feature for those who can use it. So I can highlight some time in my calendar and I can say, this is not an event, this is focus time or out of office time. And this maps to Google calendars special types. So I can say out of office and you know, grabbing, uh, grabbing a, a coffee, something like that. And it will uh, you know, properly be in the other place. And you can also set it to auto decline meetings, right? So if you use uh, Tron to uh, work with other people, uh, and collaborate within your team, you can say, please, uh, during this like out of office time, also decline any meeting attempts that someone wants to put there. Now, if you use Notion's default projects and tasks or projects, tasks and sprints template, then you will get a nice little update for your uh, Slack in as well, because you can now say something like Notion uh, task, and that allows you to create a task right from Slack. So you see, you can then uh, search for project, um, assign it to that, write the task name, test task, uh, assign it to a person, let's assign it to Matthias, uh, and so on and so on. And then uh, you can uh, actually save this task and have it also confirmed publicly if you want. Then this gets sent to Notion to that part and automatically uh, you get the confirmation here. And then you see it pops up here in Notion as a test task and correctly assigned. Again, this currently unfortunately only works with uh, Notion's uh, built-in uh, tasks and template projects. Uh, so you can do it if you have like a different database and want to pick that. But don't worry, even if you uh, start with this default, it doesn't mean you have to stick with it. You can actually take this as a blueprint and then turn it into something else. I have actually a video in the description where I explain how to do that in particular for the different spring setups. So much for the speed run of recent Notion updates. Can you spot a pattern? It seems like Notion is heading down a new direction this year. To learn more about that, I recently sat down with John Hurley, the head of product marketing at Notion, to ask him about the plans of Notion for the future. Curious what he has to say? Just click here and I'll see you in a second.